You've probably seen specs on the EcoFlow 800 watt alternator charger in Delta II. 800 watts of charging while you drive, 1,024 watt hours of battery capacity, and up to 1,000 watts of solar input. Some people are even calling this the end of solar. And honestly, it's not far off. Because this setup isn't just about numbers. It's a shift in how we think about managing power while overlanding. And for me, this shift it was something I desperately needed. My old setup, honestly, it was flat out stressful. I was constantly worrying about power. Would it make it through the night? Would I have enough power for the weekend? Would I wake up with a fridge full of warm food? And that kind of worry takes the fun out of a trip really fast. After using the EcoFlow Delta II and 800 watt alternator charger for the past year, I can confidently say this combo was a total game changer. It didn't just improve things, it fixed my biggest problem on the trail. Power went from something I thought about constantly to something I don't even have to worry about anymore. By the way, this review, no sponsorships, no freebies. I bought all of this with my own money. And what you're getting here is 100% based on real world use. So at the time, I was using a Blue Yeti EB70. That 768 watt hour power station wasn't a bad unit. It actually held up through all kinds of temperatures and abuses, but it just wasn't ever enough. I had to cut one trip short because it was cloudy all weekend. I couldn't get anything charged up. And the problem wasn't the Blue Yeti, it was, it was me. I underestimated how much power I needed. In ideal conditions, the fridge could run for three days, but actually out on the trail, things are never ideal. I was always barely getting by and learned from my mistake. I knew I was pushing it, but at the time it was what I could afford. And rather than wait to save up a bit more, I bought it and hoped for the best. Well, it didn't work out. So here's the deal. After my experience with my Blue Yeti 768 watt hour unit, I was gonna fix this problem and go overkill. And I wanted at least 200 watt hours, ideally 300. My thought process was, I want enough power for an entire weekend trip and then some. And if I can charge along the way, then that's icing on the cake, but I'm not depending on that. I spent months learning how to build my own custom system. And I was actually a week away from buying and putting together this whole system of 300 watt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, Victron components, bus bars, everything. Then EcoFlow released the 800 watt alternator charger and it changed my entire perspective. So what do we have here? The alternator charger, it's a DC to DC charge controller that pumps out 800 watts directly from your vehicle to your EcoFlow power station while you drive. It's packed with smart logic, monitors your battery voltage, and throttles the charge rate to avoid overloading your vehicle system. I picked up this bundle for around $800 in July of 2024. And prices, honestly, they jump all over the place, so watch for deals. But even at full price, totally worth it. I'd do it again without question. So the Delta II, has 1,024 watt hours of usable capacity. Now, it's not the biggest or the newest unit EcoFlow makes, but it hits that sweet spot. Enough to handle everything I run on a trip and small enough to store easily in my rig. And when paired with the alternator charger, I can go from empty to full charge in about an hour and 20 minutes of drive time. It's fast, it's easy, and best of all, I don't have to worry about power anymore. Why? Because we're always moving when we're overlanding. With 800 watts of alternator charging, I get topped off nearly every time I drive. Even on cold trips where I'm running the diesel heater in the fridge, I drop to maybe 60%, but I'm back up to 100% by lunchtime and then some. That's just how we overland. We seldom stay in one place for very long. And if we're stationary, the Delta II handles up to 1,000 watts of solar charging. So we were at Overland Expo West this past year and it was really cold every night. So we ran the diesel heater and with just 200 watts of solar charging during the day, I was still hitting 100% every evening. And that's something to consider. If you tend to find a spot and hang out there all weekend, then I might suggest you look at the Delta II Max. That's a 2,048 watt hour power station. Same specs as the Delta II, just double the battery capacity. It's usually cheaper to buy the Delta II Max than just the Delta II and the expansion battery. If I were able to do it all again and I had the money, I might have gone with the Delta II Max, just so I had the added peace of mind if we spent multiple days in one spot. But honestly, with the way we overland, the Delta II is more than sufficient. I'd hate to say, but I never need the Max. I just don't see a scenario anytime soon where I would. Again, worst case, I just idle the Jeep for 20 minutes and I'm back in business with enough juice to get me through the night. You can also take a look at the Delta III. The specs are very similar with the previous generation with a nice couple upgrades. Main one being that the Delta III has all the power ports on the front side, the Delta II has power connectors on the front and the back. Not a huge deal, but I'd prefer the Delta III setup. The three also has multiple charge ports, so you can pull more solar charging and it has multi-power charge mode. So just see what's on sale at the time. Either one is a great choice. 
I went with the Delta II because it was a better deal at the time. I've got links to all of these in the description, so be sure to shop around. Oh, so another quick bonus. So if you've got roof mounted solar panels, you can charge with solar panels and the alternator charger at the same time. Some people are seeing over 900 watts of combined input. So what does this look like in real life? So these days I wake up with 70 to 80% battery left after a typical night on the trail. A short drive, maybe 30, 45 minutes, and I'm topped back off to full. That's it. No solar panels to unpack, no stopping early or waking up at the crack of dawn. That's all gone. It just works and it's just charged up. And it's hard to explain just how freeing all this is, unless you've been in that power panic zone before. Okay, so let's talk about the name of this guy, the alternator charger. Despite what it's called, the alternator charger doesn't connect directly to your alternator. It draws power from your vehicle's main battery. So why is it called an alternator charger? <laughs> I have no idea, but it's smart enough to do it all safely and efficiently. And you can monitor everything in real time from the EcoFlow app. You can set thresholds, you can adjust limits, you can track your voltage, it's all there. And the app, honestly, it's one of the best I've seen on the market. It's clean, it's responsive, and it's more intuitive than I've seen from like Blue Yeti or Victron. So the build quality on the alternator charger is really solid and it comes with mounting hardware, but I honestly just stow mine behind the back seat. And when it's time to hit the trail, I pull it out, I plug it into the Delta II and I'm good to go. So one of the great things about this entire setup is installation is amazingly easy. You get a 15 foot cable that runs from your car battery to the alternator charger, and then a short three foot cable that goes from the charger to your power station. All the connectors are keyed and labeled. You physically can't mess it up and there's literally no way to physically plug something into the wrong port. So there's no splicing, there's no guessing, just plug it all in and go. Honestly, routing that 15 foot cable through the firewall is the trickiest part. Pro tip, start from the power station location that you're gonna have and then run it back to the battery, not the other way. Why? Because one end of the cable has a bulky ferrite core that's nearly impossible to snake through a firewall grommet. And yes, I had to learn that the hard way. I stood there staring at that cable like, how am I supposed to get this through there? Then I had a moment of realization and I rolled my eyes and I said to myself, duh, route it the other way, dummy. I'm really glad no one was here to see that moment of genius, except I'm telling y'all about it now. But hey, we're, we'll just keep it real, man. So on my Jeep, I routed the cable across the engine bay and through the driver's side firewall grommet. It's a bit of a longer run, but at least on my vehicle, there was already a large factory cable bundle on the passenger side, and it was just easier to route it through the driver's side. From there, I ran it along the door sills. And Wranglers and Gladiators have channels built in for this kind of thing. So just pop up some panels and go. And if that 15 foot cable isn't long enough for your setup, you can extend it on the battery side using proper gauge wire, crimp connectors, and some shrink tubing. Just keep the inline fuse close to the battery and you're good to go. Oh, one more thing. Don't lose the little plastic tool they give you to disconnect the power cables. It's small, it's black, it's basically designed to disappear in your rig. Um, you don't need it to plug things in, but you're gonna need it to unplug things from the alternator charger. And seriously, don't lose it. The good news is, is the connectors click into place so they won't accidentally come undone, but you definitely need that little tool to pop that connection if need be. You can do it without it, but it's a real pain. Just stow that in your center console or something like that so it's handy. So I leave my alternator charger stowed behind my back seat with the short cable attached the entire time. And when it's time to hit the road, I pull up my Delta II, I pop it on the floor in the back seat and plug everything in. I thought about mounting the alternator charger under the seat, but I already had a lot of gear there. And with that short cable, it just wasn't gonna reach and work for me. I wish EcoFlow offered a longer output cable, but with my setup, it's not really a deal breaker. So kind of a bonus feature of the alternator charger is the fact that it has reverse charging. So if you happen to drain your starter battery at camp, maybe from running lights too long or whatever, you can open up the EcoFlow app and hit reverse charge. And it will basically take your Delta II and charge up your car battery. Now, it's not gonna act like a jump pack. The Delta II can't handle the amp draw of your starter. So you'll have to wait a few minutes while it tops off your car battery to a startable voltage. But it really is huge peace of mind. All right, so let's talk drawbacks. The only real downside is that this whole system is proprietary. The alternator charger only works with EcoFlow gear. That's part of why it's so plug and play, but it also means that you're locked into their ecosystem. That being said, EcoFlow recently released a 500 watt version that works with third party power stations. All right, so let's wrap this up. So if you're still planning your trips around sunlight and wrestling with solar panels every day and constantly watching your power gauge, 
This setup is really gonna change things for you. I don't think about power anymore. I drive, it charges. I camp, it just works. That's the difference. The fact that I don't even think about it anymore has improved my overlanding experience easily tenfold. So if you can catch any of these products on sale, grab them. But honestly, even at full price, I'd do it again. You'll find links down below to all of these in the description, and it really helps out the channel a lot. I really do appreciate it. So that's it for now, guys. Stay charged, keep exploring, and as always, see what's over the ridge.